Gavin here. I thought I'd do a quick rundown of this latest version of Lightroom, and this one brings the color grading panel. It actually replaces the split toning panel. Most people are pretty excited. Some people are like, well, I don't know what happens to split toning. And we're going to look at this a little bit and talk about some things that maybe you didn't know. The first of which, the first of which is that it's pretty good. Quick introduction, and I'm going to show you guys what's new in here. By and large, I got to give a thumbs up to this update because the good news is, just right up front, the split toning stuff crosses over. The new color grading panel has more and it's good, but it's not actually that different from split toning. It's just more expanded and your split toning settings from new photos and things like that will actually cross over really, really good. And I'm going to show you that. But also, it seems to be running pretty smooth. There is a few bugs. One in particular, if you synchronize and do copy and paste, depending on when you're watching this video, this is like the week of release for this, this Lightroom here at the end of October in 2020. So probably when you're watching this, this is already fixed. But in the first zero release, there's a bug when you copy and paste that it seems to screw up the white balance, regardless of whether you select white balance. And it seems to be if you synchronize to, from what I can tell, Adobe has already acknowledged this. And I'm assuming in the next fix, I would certainly hope in the next fix, it will be resolved because, well, it's a pretty big bug. Went outside because there was light and I'm like, okay, let's talk about this latest version of Lightroom. Let's actually go in, take a look, and I'll show you. Now, I think it's a good idea first to look at what the old tool that this replaced it, and that is the split toning tool. Now, some people might panic a little bit, oh, split toning's gone. And while it's a little bit different, actually the tools aren't that much different. Split toning allowed us to have shadow and highlight control and then a balance in the middle so we could shift it towards the shadows or toward the highlights. So if I wanted to say add a color to the highlights, let's go in and, and put something like Velvia 100 from Filmist on this, right? And you can see that there's a very slight use of split toning. I don't use split toning a lot because most of my color manipulation happens in the curve channels because it's more advanced. However, it can still be a very useful tool. You can see if I crank up the saturation, I have barely any applied. I get a lot more blue in the highlights. And if I do the same in the shadows, I have a, a warm color applied here. I get a lot more in the shadows. So I could then change the hue of it to change what color. The downside of this is it's rather limited. It only does shadows and highlights. The new color grading tool replaces split toning by adding midtones and adding standardization. This brings Lightroom up to speed with software like Capture One. Uh, these are similar wheels like we use in video editing. So it's a lot more of a standardized system. If we look at Capture One, you can see that we already have this in the color panel. You can see that this is virtually identical uh, with some sliders and stuff in different positions to what we now have in Lightroom. It's a standard color wheel. We have a master and we can go here and we have the three-way and we have the shadow, mid-tone, and highlight. And so we can control this in much the same way. It's very smooth. And then you have the handles on the side where you can kind of micro control the positioning. I would say Capture One, which is famed for its color con control features, still has more advantages than some of the other color editing panels and things like that. But this is great to see in Lightroom because it really brings us up to speed. Now, as you open up version 10, you'll see there's a few new features, but the main one is color grading. There's been some performance things added, uh, brushes, gradients, GPU support for those. That's good. Some features added to Zoom and a few things here and there for Canon Live View, stuff like that. Ready, happy, and smiling in the latest version of Lightroom. Let's reset this ugly green cast that we put on when we were experimenting with a shift command R. Now you can see that we have a file and instead of our split toning, we now have color grading, but notice this is right where the split toning was, it replaces it. I got an email this morning and it said, well, are presets like Filmus that use split toning gonna not work now? Are they not gonna be complete in the new version because of color grading? And the answer is no, it's fine. First of all, when I design presets, unless it's for, for a special reason, usually I do color tinting with curves because it's more advanced. Although I may in the future use more with color grading, because now we have more controls. But you'll notice here that we still have the shadows and highlights. The baseline of shadows and highlights is really not that different than split toning. What we have now that's different is mid-tones and we have more precise controls like blending and balance and individuals, shadow, mid-tone, highlights, global, all that kind of stuff. So we have a lot more control 
but those shadows and highlights are actually still there. So if I go to a same preset like we were looking at a minute ago, uh, remember the Velvia 100 preset that applied a little bit of split toning? I'm gonna click that and you'll see it just changed right over here. There's that gold tone in the highlights, or in the shadows rather, and that blue tone in the highlights. And it's just very subtle. And you could see that I could hit, click here and reset this and put it back to normal. So it essentially, in response to presets that in the past only use shadows and highlights from split toning, it's applying those directly to shadows and highlights from these. And going forward, updating new presets and making new processes and color looks, we'll be able to use color grading to do some more advanced things. But the fact is, we've already been doing that in our presets for a long time using the advanced color controls of tone curve. That's how we got things like Filmist, like Muse, and things like that to have such advanced color controls. Okay, let's stop talking about that and move into what color grading actually does. Despite this looking a lot different, it's not that different from split toning. It's what split toning should have been years ago and wasn't. And this has been a little bit of a frustration over the years because split toning has always been really limited. But what's going on here is not that different. So you'll see we have now standardized color wheels more or less like we see in Capture One, like we see in most video editors. And what can we do with those? Well, we have midtones, and basically we're adding a color cast to where we define. So I can say, well, let's put it in midtones. You should be able to double click. If you get something ugly, you should be able to double click on the circle. It's a little glitchy, but you can double click, which is a normal feature in color wheels, and it will reset it to zero. So if the circle there is at zero, you're at nothing. You have nothing applied. Here's the color. And the more closer we are to the edge is how saturated that color. So hue, like we had in split toning, saturation. And then if we do things like control, if we hold control, we lock the saturation and we can rotate the hue around. If we do alt, we can move the circle, the color selector, a little more specifically, whereas if we undo all, it moves kind of rapidly. These wheels aren't that big. However, we can switch to the individuals. So let's do that as well. So we have mid-tone shadows highlights, right? Then we can go and look at them larger if we want some more precision, if we're doing something that requires something specific. Like when I'm making film looks, I have to be really specific with hues, and sometimes I spend a lot of time with that. Okay, so now here's a global. It's applying basically a color cast to everything. Almost like a white balance, but separate from a white balance. This is actually really good because if you're making effects that you wanna use on other images, you don't wanna alter or save a preset, for example, with white balance because it's completely different from image to image. But you can get a nice cast or tint or subtle hue, make it a little warm, make it a little cool on a global level with this, again, like a standard color wheel. So we're, we have these color wheels finally in Lightroom. What can you do with them? You can do whatever you want with them. Essentially, you're gonna be able to use them like split toning. So I can say here, all right, the midtones are fine. I'm gonna leave those, but let's put a little blue in the shadows and I'm gonna hold Alt here. And so I can do it a little slow and precise because sometimes these wheels move really fast. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little blue in the shadows Let's make it a little more toward the magenta, okay? Now I can do the blending, which essentially is gonna feather it between shadows and highlights and midtones. It's it's surrounding color spectrums, right? So by default, that's in the middle. And I can do balance, which if I go down on the balance, it's gonna lean more towards the shadows in whatever I'm defining. And if I go up, it's gonna lean more towards the highlights. It's gonna favor the highlights. If I favor the shadows more, it's basically gonna feather out those shadows wider and push my color tint more into the shadows. If I do it more toward the highlights, it's gonna push it up and favor the highlights. Because remember, we don't have a full zone scale from zero to 10 here. So we have shadows, midtones, highlights that we're working with. And this allows us a little more of a nuanced control over this. Uh, Blake, Blake Rudis did a cool video where he was looking at these and he put it on a zone scale. So you could kind of see, and me and him are both really into zones and you could kind of see the way that the balance moved across. 
as you changed these different sliders. Just like, just like split toning, I would usually use very little. I would just add a little bit of tint, right? And then we can go over here to the mid-tones and maybe I'm gonna warm up the mid-tones just, just a tiny, maybe put a little bit of red in there and then go here to the highlights and let's uh, see what this does, okay? We don't wanna make them muddy. I'm gonna again lean toward the blues, maybe a little bit, maybe toward the teals or a darker blue, just a little bit on the highlights. And then we have a global, so I could warm the whole thing up. Not so different than just adding a little warmth in white balance, but completely independent of it, which is phenomenal. And you can see you can have some individual controls down here as well on these. So if you get comfortable and you get really moving on this and you're like, oh, I just want to do this one the same hue that I used last time, you can actually manually enter the hue number here, which is really cool. So these wheels actually have some more features even than Capture One has. You also have a luminance value control here under each of the shadows, midtones, and highlights. This is pretty cool. To be honest, I'll probably use curves uh, rather than try and control luminance values here of these channels for now. And maybe we'll do some more videos on that in the future, but the bottom line is you can play around with these until they feel right. Don't, don't be intimidated because you have three color wheels. What do I do with color wheels? Basically, it's just a more advanced split toning. You have more control, you now have the midtones, you now have the independence, you now have the global. It's a split toning that you can do so much more with, and your old split toning presets seem to come over just fine. You just have a lot more controls now. I'm certainly gonna be experimenting with these as we make more presets and things like that and find out where I can use them. Also, don't forget, you can click this little triangle here and you can have the sliders like you did with split toning. So let's go here to shadows, for example, right? We have our blues and you can see those numbers are moving. When the slider is closed, we have the numbers, we can enter them manually, but you can expand the little arrow here right down to the right and you can control hue, saturation and luminance. And so we have these sliders and you can control your color selector this way as well, if you prefer, just like we used to do you can see that I have nothing in these. Now, I've already ran a preset. I believe this was a, a Muse preset that I ran on this and I tweaked it and we have some different settings. It looks really good, but let's just play around a little bit. So what could I do? Well, I have my shadows. I could put some a little more blue or teal in my shadows. But again, I'm gonna use the slider because I can do it very subtly. If you look at my presets, and let's go to mid-tones now, I'm just gonna warm those up a tiny bit. Uh, if you look at my presets, that you've used in the past, you will see that most of the time when I'm using these, I'm using them in very small quantities. It's not like there's a rule about this, but yes, usually in very small quantities. Now, what I'll often do is crank saturation way up to help me choose the color, and I'm just using the sliders for that now. So let's say I wanted to get a nice skin tone and just kind of warm up our skin tones a little bit. I might find the right level of warmth, right? And then I would turn it way down to kind of bring more of a warm cast instead of a red cast in here. And I'm just gonna put like five. So I know I didn't change a lot here. It's me, I'm still recording, because I thought I'd do an outro, an outro, but obviously it's the same scene when I was doing the intro. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that like button, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. How do you like the color grading panel? I feel like, I feel like honestly this brings Lightroom's color manipulation a little closer to capture one. It's it's really not equal still, but I like that we're seeing improvements, that we're actually seeing some real competition between these. In a lot of ways, Lightroom is easier to use and a lot of people like it better than capture one. But for a long time, capture one has been known for its color. And we see Lightroom making progress on that with this. I think that's good and we'll keep watching it, see what it does. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. One little nugget I thought was worth noting is that Adobe actually did a pretty good job in like reverse and forward compatibility here. So if we look, so I put the Velvia 100 simulation on a photo a few minutes ago. And then what I did with this photo is I took the color grading settings that we put down and I just saved it as a preset in this version of Lightroom called Color Wheels. And now let's actually go over to Notepad and I wanna show you what I found. If you look here, here is the Velvia 100, and you can see the split toning that was in Velvia 100 in the code. Most of you would never play with this. I know it's a little nerdy. In the XMP, you can see there's our split toning settings within the code. If we go over to the new color grading feature in the new preset, what they did is they used the same nomenclature. So they added the mid-tone, the color blending, all the other color grade CRS lines to this 
in this one, but they didn't rename the split toning bass lines, which was really intelligent because it means all those presets that you made, that you bought, all the tools you have coming forward, any photos that you've processed with the old version, they're gonna come over smoothly and have that compatibility. And I think it'll actually make it easier for me to make presets that have reverse compatibility as well so they can be fully featured. Just, just a little note that I thought was cool. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, but I, I think I've covered it. It's pretty simple. Think split tones, but more.